What's going on, everybody? I haven't done a solo Ask Me Anything podcast in a long time, but I did think this was a good opportunity to do so because I'm back from ICAST this week. ICAST is the American Sport Fishing Association's trade show. And every year, most of the fishing industry descends upon Orlando, Florida, and uh, there is a big trade show there. It's a very important event for the dealers. It's a very important event for the manufacturers, and it's a very important event for media. So every year when I get back from ICAST or while I'm there posting a few things, people ask a lot of questions. And so this year I thought, what a good opportunity to put out on social media and into the uh, text thread that we have, which is 305-930-7346. If you ever have questions or concerns or suggestions for the show, you can ask them there. And that's exactly what came in. So a ton of questions came in about the ICAST show. First of all, some people feel like this event is kind of shrouded in mystery because it doesn't seem like just anybody can go. They say, well, that looks cool. I want to go to ICAST. How do I do that? Oh, you got to be invited. Or, oh, that's for the insiders or whatever whatever someone were to tell you. So I'm going to fix all that. We're going to talk about that right now, about exactly what the ICAST show is and who it's designed for and who can go and how you could go if you wanted to go. Um, so that's what we're going to start with. The ICAST show... This is from their website. ICAST is the premier destination for every manufacturer and dealer who considers anglers their target audience. Many companies reveal their latest product innovations. Some companies make their worldwide debut. Whatever your customers want, you'll find it at ICAST. ICAST is a trade-based show and is not open to the general public. So the first thing is there's two kinds of shows. There are consumer shows and there are trade shows. And a consumer show would be something like the Miami Boat Show. You can go to the Miami Boat Show. It's for consumers. It's for um, manufacturers to show their boats and sell their boats. There's, they want as many people to come through there as possible. They'll sell tickets. Anybody can go. A trade show is something that is for manufacturers, dealers, and other people that are doing business in whatever industry that is. And in the fishing world, that's ICAST. That's what it is. So you're supposed to be a manufacturer, retailer, or media covering new products. Um, All of what you see when you walk in there, you walk in, and, and if you're like me, the first time I ever walked in there, I was like a kid in the candy store because... I look around and all of the brands that I'd ever heard of, all of my favorite brands, many I'd never heard of, and every fishing celebrity and superstar is walking around in this giant room, and I thought it was really, really cool. That's over 25 years ago now, and honestly, I, I still kind of feel that way. When I walk in, it's just really cool to see everything under one roof, all of your favorite brands, and and uh, for us, it's also great that we can see all of our sponsors or most of our sponsors in one show, under one roof. So that's really cool. Um, and when you get there, the idea is that someone, a manufacturer, let's just say Hook, for example, Hook Clothing, they're one of our sponsors and a, and a company that we work with, they will come up with all their new products for 2024, and they will showcase them all out. They'll all be on hangers. It'll look like a store. It's a beautiful booth. There's some places you can sit down. They'll have their, their pro staffs and everything in there that you can talk to. And they'll have all of their entire line out there so that you can pick it up. You can feel it. You can put your hands on it. You can look at the different colors. Everything that's going to happen. So the idea is that a dealer could come there and make their order for the year. Okay, so it's a very, very important show for the dealer who, instead of looking at something on the internet and making their order, they are actually being able to put their hands on it. They're actually able to talk to some of the pros that might have helped design this product as to why it's better than the last one. Is this something that they should carry or not? Is this good for their clients or not? And this is where a lot of orders for the year, certainly before the internet, this is where all of the orders for the year were written right there. So you would order all your stuff for the year. As the internet is around now, it's a little, maybe a little bit different situation, but that is the case. So every company, 
whether it's a clothing company or a fishing tackle company or a lure company, line company, anybody, um, power pole, everybody that you can imagine is at iCast. And they all have their newest products laid out there and people telling you about why this is a product that maybe you might want to carry in your store or why this is a product that is going to revolutionize the industry. So all of that is super cool if you are a student of fishing like me. I'm a student of fishing. I like to see new products. I like to see innovations. I like to see um, all, all kinds of things that are going on within the fishing industry. And over the years, we've seen some things that have really, really been special, like when Yeti debuts their product in a tiny little 10 by 10 booth at iCast and uh, nobody pays them any attention. We'll fast forward to now Yeti. You know what Yeti is. It's one of the biggest success stories of all time. That starts in the fishing industry and it moves out through the world. And seeing something like that happen, develop, mature, and 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 evolve into what it is today over 25 years or 20 years or 10 years or whatever it's been is a really cool story. That's happened for so many products in the fishing industry and, uh, you know, some with, with different levels of success. The Yeti is definitely the, the, uh, that's the one that everybody wants to replicate. Um, so many people, want to know. That sounds really cool. I'm a, I'm a student of fishing, just like you. I'm a fan of fishing. I watch all these fishing shows. I watch the tournaments. I compete in tournaments. I want to go here. I want to meet all these people and learn more about fishing. How do I go? So one of the things uh, that has been the, the question probably asked the most is how do I go to ICAST? Okay, so you have to fit into a couple of categories. And I got this right off of their website. You can go and see the same thing off their website. Um, but iCast has a wide range of badge categories. And these are the badge descriptions. And if you fit into these descriptions, it's very easy to go. You pay your money and you go. But you have to show proof that you are one of these things. So the first thing is an exhibitor. An exhibitor have an allotment of four badges per 100 square feet. Any badge request over the four per 100 will have an additional fee. So what that means is if you have a 100 square foot booth, you can bring four people. If you want to bring 10 people, you have to pay an additional fee. Now, who would you want to bring uh, in addition to your team? That might be a captain that's using your product, a fishing guide that's using your product, uh, somebody that helped you design the product, maybe somebody in, in, uh, in the fishing industry that is some sort of an influencer that's helping you to sell the product. So that's how a lot of people get into the show. They're invited by an exhibitor. Um, the second category is a buyer or a retailer. All buyers must include proper con credentials for approval. I don't know what those credentials are, but they you have to pass those by the ICAST people and you pay for whatever badge that you get. The, another category is a buyer wholesale. All buyers must include proper credentials for approval. So I don't know if you're a card carrying buyer wholesaler, whatever that means. I'm not, so I don't know what the credentials are, but that is uh, that's another deal. The, uh, a badge category. Next one is manufacturer's rep. Indefin independent sales representatives who handle many different manufacturer's product lines. So you've probably run into the fishing reps uh, in the fly shop or in, you know, around uh, servicing your local tackle shop or whatever. They are the ones that represent the manufacturer so they go to the tackle shop or the fly shop they tell them about all the new rods they tell them what's coming they take their order and they service that account is there something wrong is they need more of something that is a is a job and so there'll be a bunch of manufacturers reps there another uh, category is media editorial this is generally where i fall in Media credentials are issued to media reps whose purpose is to write about show products and their other ICAST-related events. Marketing, public relations, and advertising reps do not qualify for press cred credentials. Student and corporate members in professional outdoor, outdoor writer media communication 
communicator organizations do not automatically qualify for a media editorial badge. Corporate members generally fall into the media sales category. So I was mistaken. I'm usually not media editorial. I'm usually media sales, which means they're not giving me a badge. I'm buying a badge, uh, but I'm buying it through the media sales category because that's what we are. We're a television show and we sell advertising on that television show. A non-exhibiting member manufacturer is another category. Sport fishing, allied marine manufacturer that is a member of ASA but not exhibiting at ICAST. Okay, so that seems like a little workaround. Some of these are new to me because I don't, I, I, I've never really actually read this. But it seems like that's a little workaround if you want to go and you are in the sport fishing industry in some way and you are a member of American Sport Fishing Association, which I don't know how much that costs or what that entails, but I'm sure it's on their website and could be very easy to find. And you're not an exhibitor of ICAST, you can go. So maybe uh, maybe you're in that category. Okay, so here's another category. First time non-exhibiting manufacturer. Any manufacturer who has not previously attended or exhibited in ICAST. So if you are... Um, thinking about going to ICAST and, and buying a booth space there. They may give you a free pass to come in there or at least allow you to buy a, a ticket to come in there so that you can um, check it out and see what the most effective way. Um, government or association, federal, state, or f- federal or state fish and wildlife agency employees and people employed by natural resource affiliated nonprofit associations only. So... If you're a game warden and you want to go to ICAST, you're welcome to go there. They seems like they would give you a badge. I don't know. Maybe you have to pay for a badge. But if you are a federal or state Fish and Wildlife Agency employee, you're, you have a category for yourself there. Another category, industry associate, industry supplier. Members of industry-related associations, trade shows, etc., Catch all category. So not exactly sure what that means, but this one, the next one is new to me and probably will um, mean a lot to most of the audience here. If you are a captain or a guide, persons licensed by the U.S. Coast Guard to carry passengers for hire and who operates the charter boat or head boat must provide a valid captain's license or guide license. So there you go. If you have a guide license or a captain's license, you have a category that you can go to ICAST. So um, you could you could attend under that uh, under that deal. If you didn't have a uh, a manufacturer that you were working with or um, you just wanted to go. You wanted to be unattached to any manufacturer, and you wanted to go if you're a captain or a guide and you have a captain's license, then you're, you're welcome to do so also. Media sales. If a media rep is from a media source, newspaper, magazine, broadcast.com, but is in advertising sales, then he or she falls under the media sales category and must register in that category and pay the respective member or non-member registration fee. The media sales badge also applies to marketing, public relations, and sponsorship development. Okay, so that's definitely me, and we pay for that, and uh, that's how we get in there. Custom tackle retailer. Manufacturers producing private label custom products for resale. And then there is nonprofit and educational organizations. Organizations or institutions that incorporate recreational fishing, fishing conservation in their mission or curriculum. So those are the badge um, categories, and if you fall into one of those, then you um, obviously can buy or receive a badge and go into ICAST like you want to. So it's important to remember that ICAST is a trade-based show and not open to the general public. So all that information comes right off of the ICAST website. Uh, Some of it, the captain and guide, I didn't know that you could get in um, that way, so... It seems like if you want to go to ICAST, you can probably go. Now, there are certainly people that are fans of the fishing industry and want to go that do not fall into any of those. So I guess the next way would be to be invited by a manufacturer so that you could go in under their deal and maybe you're providing some kind of value to that manufacturer 
uh, or you have a friend that owns a company and you just want to go, that may be a way for you to get in. Um, and then uh, there's the old-fashioned badge switcheroo, which is not something that I advocate, but uh, I've seen kids that want to go into ICAST really bad just kind of hang around and ask somebody if they could if they're leaving and they're done with the show, if they could use their badge, I guess that happens. And, uh, I don't know, you got to get in some way. I mean, you know, you just have to have the appropriate badge. You walk through the door and you're in, then nobody checks the badge after that. So, uh, you just have to go past the door. You have to have some sort of badge. So my suggestion would be to fall into one of those exhibitor categories, um, and go that way. So, that's what it is. That's who can go or who is supposed to go and how you might be able to go. And then I got a bunch of other, um, I got a bunch of other questions. So we're going to go through those right now. Um, somebody asked captain's credentials good to go. So as we just found out on the uh, website, yes, if you have a captain's license, you are good to go. You'll probably have to buy a, uh, uh, a ticket there or a pass or a, or a, a badge so that is um, something that you that you think about. Somebody asked, you know, what do I like about the show? What do I like about iCast? So first of all, it's a very, very important time of the year for us. I've been going to iCast for over 25 years. When I first went, I was helping uh, a reel company design some of their saltwater spinning reels. And that was my first introduction to iCast. I went there, I saw what it was, and I knew that I would probably be going back there every single year. And that was my introduction. Um, since then, developed a lot of deep relationships in the, in the fishing industry and under that roof at iCast. It's a time of the year that you get back to, um, to see a lot of people that that maybe you haven't seen in a long time. And in, in, in my case, um, there were a lot of tournaments that we did, the, the red bone tournaments to the, the professional redfish trail. And we fished with and against a lot of people that are still in the fishing industry. So it's really nice to see those people, whether they were your, your, your fiercest competitor or whether they were one of your allies and, and good friends. Um, we went through a lot of stuff together. We went through a lot of, a lot of tournaments and, and stress and, and it was a, it was a really cool time. So I'm really, uh, happy to see all of those people and certainly all of the companies and the, the people that have worked in these companies. There are so many people that are career fishing industry people, and they have moved around from, from one company to another. Some have not, some have stayed exactly in the same place that they were for 25 years. And we've been working with those same people. So it's always nice to get there and see uh, that. Plus, as much as anybody out there, I'm a fan of fishing. I um, I watch all the fishing shows. I when I was a kid, I watched fishing. You know, Bill Dance, Roland Martin, Jimmy Houston, Hank Parker, Shaw Grigsby, all those guys. I watched on television. Some that aren't on there anymore, like Orlando Wilson and many others. I watched the the professional bass tournaments on TV, so I, I'm familiar with with all of the the bass fishing. And I'd watch fishing, I'd watch professional wrestling, and I'd watch roller derby. So if you didn't think I was a redneck before, now you definitely know that I'm a redneck. But that's what we had on TV where I grew up was pretty much fishing, professional wrestling, and roller derby in that order. And me and my dad would sit down and watch these fishing shows. So I'm a big fan of fishing shows. So when I see um, Roland Martin or Bill Dance or Hank Parker, man, it's kind of a surreal moment. That's somebody I watched growing up, and it's really cool. So I'm lucky enough that most of those guys have become friends, and uh, and it's it's fun to to see them. Um, it's fun to see legends like Kevin Van Dam or Mike Iaconelli or uh, any of the professional bass anglers that I, that I know and have followed and have seen win big tournaments or compete in big tournaments or be in the running and then lose it. I mean, you get to kind of know these guys over TV, and um, it's cool to, to actually meet them. And so that all happens at, at ICAST. Um, you know, 
one of the things, another question was, what was the coolest thing that you saw at iCast? And of course, we have tons of products that are really a big innovation. I, you know, as far as the products go, the power pole trolling motor is revolutionary and incredible. And it's incredibly quiet and silent. And everything that you've heard about it is pretty much dead on. That thing is really incredible. So that was what probably stood out to me um, maybe most out of the whole show was that and how it could change the way that we fish. Um, the Daiwa new electric reel was, was amazing. Um, there were so many things. So many things were, were fantastic um, at the show. But what really stood out to me more than anything was that somehow time has passed very quickly. And, you know, I was fishing not too long ago. I was the, I was the youngest one in ICAST, or at least it felt that way to me. I, looking around, everybody out there had more experience. Everybody out there, you know, I had watched on TV or, or you know, all these companies. I just couldn't imagine, you know, using their products and being so lucky to be sponsored by those companies. And somewhere along the line, time passed very quickly. And there was a group of people that, like like the people I was talking about, that, that we all fished the redfish tournaments together. And it was cool this year to see that group of people and to see that they are all working with their sons or daughters and bringing a, another generation into it. And um, I saw, um, let's see, who all did I see? I saw quite a few. Uh, Rick Murphy had his wife and and uh, son Ridge with him, and they were walking around together. I had my son Turner was with me, and he was helping us to to sell some stuff and learning the business. Uh, C. A. Richardson has his son Cameron doing the production for him. Blair Wiggins has his son doing the production for him. Bill Dance has always had his daughter around, and uh, she she helps him with all kinds of things, and. Um, that was really cool to see that there is a another generation coming in and there there is another generation you know there to help um, continue on what what has been built Kevin Van Dam retired this year that was a that was a really big one uh, that stood out to me and he had a he had a going away farewell speech and you know Kevin Van Dam is I mean, call him whatever you want. The Michael Jordan of fishing. He has won more and had more of a dominant uh, tournament career than I think anyone. And uh, he he has had just a really incredible run at it. So to see him retire was um, interesting because I also remember when Kevin Van Dam was the was the kid from Kalamazoo. He turned into the man from Michigan. And uh, when, when everybody was calling Kevin Van Dam the kid from Kalamazoo, and, uh, you know, it just seems like yesterday that, that we were all kids in this industry, and somehow we've, we've grown up, and you see somebody like Kevin Van Dam retire. That was, <laughs> that was, that was something. So other things, you know, just, just a lot of new products, a lot of, uh, a lot of innovation, and, and that's the thing that has happened in ICAST. It's one of the most interesting things over all the different years that I've gone there. I've seen things like a power pole um, be a, basically a prototype and then change the way that we all fish in both freshwater and saltwater, change boat design, change all kinds of things. The Yeti cooler go from being you know, something that everybody thought, man, that's too expensive. You'll never sell one of those. That's what everybody told them on the first I cast. Um, and, and you see what Yeti is today. Um, I mean, so many, so many of these different companies. Hook just started out of, out of nowhere and is now a, a huge, huge uh, company. Um, so all of those innovations are great. Other innovations that were uh, industry-wide at some point were like the, the, um, the innovation of braided line. When braided line hit and, you know, in the next couple of years, it revolutionized everything. It's changed everything about fishing. The reel design is different. The rod designs are different. The fish that we're fishing for are different. The way that we're fishing for them is different, all because of an innovation in braid, chemically sharpened hooks, all of these things that we've talked about, 
um, on the on the podcast. Those are all innovations that we've seen come through iCast. And you know, when they do have one of these big innovations, they make a big deal out of it. And it's not like every big innovation that's made a big deal out of it changes fishing, because we've certainly seen plenty that they make a big deal out of. It's flash in the pan. The next year, it's gone. But there have been a few that really, really stuck around. Other things that have kind of developed at ICAST and and uh, or at least been promoted. And the first that I've heard of them is at ICAST. Something like Captains for Clean Water, uh, a group that um, you know saw that there was a problem and has done a tremendous amount to fix that problem. And ICAST has certainly helped them to amplify their message by getting their message in front of the leaders in the fishing industry to understand what the problem is, what the solution is, and how they are trying to help. So that's that's super cool. And, um, you know, battery technology has changed, and we see that coming into ICAST. And all of these things, basically, we celebrate every single year about how the fishing industry has changed, how it stayed the same, and what the overall goal for the fishing industry is, and that is to recruit new anglers. We need new anglers in fishing. We need younger people. We need people that do not have a history or someone in their family that has taught them how to fish. We need people like you to be a mentor to people and take somebody fishing for the first time and show them how to do it, show them where to go and get them involved to where it's not so, um, it's not so intimidating for somebody that has never been, but would like to go. So there's opportunities for everyone to, to play a part in it, whether you're in the fishing industry or you're not in the fishing industry, you could be the person that takes the next Kevin Van Dam fishing. And, uh, you know, some kid catches his first bass and, and, and turns into the most dominant, um, bass fisherman of all time could happen. Never know. So, um, at ICAST this year, I saw all my friends. I saw all the people that are on TV. Um, and it was really, really cool. It was a very healthy ICAST with lots of innovation and lots of new products. I thought that the overall, uh, vibe within the building was incredibly positive. There have been years where it is not that positive, like after the crash of 2008, for example, that was a pretty quiet eye cast. This one I felt like was one of the very best ones of, of all time. So I'm going to go to, um, the, um, the text thread and also to the, the, um, um, the, the social media and just see if I'm missing any questions here. Just making sure, uh, Rob Chapman, ask who was your favorite uh random bathroom run-in so that was that was rob chapman we ran into each other in the bathroom and uh that's one of the funny things about the fishing industry and the iCast thing is there's no private bathrooms for any of the bass fishing superstars or the tv superstars or everything so you run into them everywhere including the bathroom so that was kind of funny uh rob rob chapman if you know who he is he uh he's lost a ton of weight and he looks fantastic. So good job to you, Rob. Um, let's see if I got any other questions here. I know I do from the uh, from the uh, the deal. Um, one of the things that happened at ICAST is the Costa uh, Captains for Clean Water Steward of the Year was uh, given out again. I was lucky enough to win that in 2019. Honored to do so. There's some really great people on that trophy, including Flip Pallet and Carter Andrews, Benny Blanco, and many others. And this year, it was Wesley Locke who won that. So congratulations to her. That was fantastic. Jay Dirk 15 asked, what company provides the best food after party during the event? Got to say, uh, um, there are some really good after parties and, and not a lot of food during the event, but there are people that will bring in uh, somebody to play the guitar and they'll have some some kegs of beer and stuff. Costa is always known for that. Yeti always has a good party. And, um, you know, there's there's a few others, but I would think that maybe Costa would be my uh, would be my um, my my vote on that one. Um, Dieter Melhorn missed me at ICAST. 
Um, let's see. Okay, so that's mostly the ones from from social media and on the uh, on the uh, text thread. This is where we got most of them. Um, so one person said, "I saw something about a free workout at iCast. What is that all about?" So every year at iCast, I would just put out there on social media generally and also on the text thread that I will be hosting a free workout. It's been a great way to kind of develop a tradition and get some of the same people out there over and over again. Typically, we do a deck of cards workout. The deck of cards workout is very scalable for anyone. And, you know, sometimes we've had 15 people come out. Sometimes we have five. The limiting factor is generally that um, it's at 530 in the morning. So a lot of people stay out late. Uh, entertaining, drinking, different things, and the 5.30 in the morning does present quite a problem for for some people. But for the ones that have come, we've had a good time over the last few years. We've developed a a tradition, and we do that in a parking lot. So if you want to come next year, you can get the... uh, it's uh, 5980 Destination Parkway is is where it is. It's in the parking lot of the fire department. And if you don't like rolling around in a dirty parking lot as much as I do, bring a towel or a mat or something like that. Um, uh, but you'll be the only one that has one there. So that's one thing. Um, but we'd love to have you come out to the workout if, uh, if that's something that you want to do. So let's see here. Um, who let's see here a couple more um what was your favorite thing that you saw this year uh probably the power pole trolling motor but also seeing people bringing their sons and daughters that was cool are there learn learning opportunities there from dennis Haddon? uh yes i would think that icast is full of learning opportunities because you're getting to talk to the manufacturers you're getting to talk to the people that design the product you're getting to talk to the pros that use it and you're finding out all kinds of things you you could have some real revelations at icast i think absolutely steven fluke who uh came to uh two of the workouts he says what's the first step to to take to host a fishing show on waypoint so good question the first step to take would, I guess, be to decide that that's something that you really wanted to do. Um, and secondly, it would be to develop some sort of a concept and get something down to where you could illustrate that concept. Typically, that's called a pilot. A pilot show is a kind of a tester that is somewhere. It doesn't have to be exactly 22 minutes and 30 seconds, but it could be something around uh, your idea, what that looks like, and you know, it's up to you as far as are you a really good salesman? Do you need a two-minute one or a 20-minute one? Um, how can you illustrate what your show is going to be about and uh, get people interested in producing it? Then if you can, uh, or producing it or sponsoring it, and if you can pull that off, uh, the people at Waypoint are happy to talk to you about getting it on there as long as the quality is good enough. A um, lot of lot of questions on here. How can I go if I'm not in the industry? Any Can anyone attend? We went over all of that stuff and all the badge categories, but that definitely is uh, one of the big ones. Uh, Douglas Fleming asks, is there ever uh, an ICAST to the north, or is it just... There isn't enough interest, and he's in Ohio. Now, there's plenty of interest up there, and there people in Ohio do plenty of fishing, and then you got the Great Lakes just north of you and some very avid fishermen up there. But ICAST is one time of the year, and ICAST used to be in Las Vegas. We used to go to Las Vegas, and uh, over time it has moved to uh, Orlando. I think it'll probably stay in Orlando. That's my... That's my feeling. I don't have any inf- insider information on that. It just seems like it's found a home there, and that's a good place for it. I personally, I liked it when it was in Las Vegas. I thought it was fun. I thought it was cool. Gave a lot of good um, entertainment opportunities. You could go see shows. You could go and, you know, a lot of people like gambling and hanging out at the casinos, but. You know, Vegas is a a convention town, so that's what they do. But Orlando is also a convention town, and that is what they do. So there's plenty of of, uh, entertainment opportunities at Orlando. But I do kind of get the feeling that it's going to stick around. So it's not that there's not interest 
to the north. It's just that there's one show, and it probably is either going to happen in Las Vegas or in Orlando, and it sounds like Orlando. So any chance a non-professional fisherman could attend? Lots and lots and lots of questions like that. Um, yes, just you can go on to the, uh, to the website of ICAST if you didn't get all of the badge um, categories that, that I just went over. Um, and see where you fit in there. If you have any questions, I'm sure you can call the ASA, and they will be happy to tell you where you fit or don't fit and how you could possibly go. I think that if you really want to go to ICAST, you could probably figure out a way to go there, and it is certainly not something that is exclusive or that people are kept out of. It is simply a trade show. You would have the same difficulty going to a uh, a comic book trade show or a or a um, a cooking trade show to where it's designed for the people in the industry to go there and buy those products to put in their stores it's designed for that it's not open to the public and then maybe the next the following week there could be a a cooking consumer show that is open to the public and it's similar but different so iCast is certainly not exclusive. It is certainly not only for the insiders. It is simply for people that are trying to do business within the fishing industry. That's it for iCast this year. iCast 2023 has come and gone. I thought it was one of the best ones ever. I'm happy to be there, and I was happy to uh, have so many people stop me and say hi and that, tell me they were fans of the show. That's fantastic. That means a tremendous amount to me. So if you have always wanted to go, maybe this podcast clarified how you might do that. And if that is you and you see me next year, Stop me. Let me know. Okay? That's it for this week. We'll see you next week.